So to begin with, in the left corner, you can see in the asset area, there are four images, nothing, anything special about these. They are just simply drawn in external paint program. You can use whatever you want. I used Anime Studio, but they're PNG. That way the background is transparent. So let's start by taking the maze image and drag and dropping it into the hierarchy section. If you notice the frame here, that shows you what the player can view at any given time. So the maze is much larger than the playable viewable area. That's by design. That's intentional. Because what's going to happen is just as the camera here is centered, the player will also be centered and they will move at the same time, basically creating the illusion that the maze itself is moving when in fact it's just that the player and the camera will be moving in sync. So the first thing we need to do, even though there's an image of a wall here, it doesn't actually stop anything. The way for something to be solid, you need a collider. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to build colliders around the walls, which is actually really easy. There's a built-in polygon collider that will come close to getting the walls. We'll have to make a few tweaks, but let's go ahead and do that. So with the maze selected over here in the inspector, we're going to click on add component because these are called components. We're going to add a new component, physics 2D, polygon collider 2D. Going to scroll using the scroll wheel, going to scroll right. That's just holding the right mouse button. And you can see there's a gap here for the exit and you can see that like this is all a space. This is a space that's good, but you can see that there are some lines blocking the path, so we just have to manually move those. It's easy. Like I said, it's a little bit tedious, but it's really easy. So you're just going to click on Edit Collider, and then it's like you're just going to grab that point, and you move it to the corner. That's basically what you're doing. You're moving points to corners. You might have to create a few new points, like this one here. And by creating a new point, you just point anywhere in the line, left-click and hold, and that makes a new point. We'll bring that point down, left-click anywhere here. And we'll just move that to that corner. You can see this line jumping around. That's fine. Doesn't matter. As long as your passages aren't being blocked, you can take that corner, move that up a little bit. Left click anywhere here. Go to that. And you can see that you're indeed having lines surround each wall. We'll move that corner in a little bit. Left click, move that one up. And if you get the idea, you can skip ahead a few seconds. This won't take long, though. And again, you're just making sure that you've got green lines surrounding the walls. Okay, so there's our maze and all the walls have borders. Now what we need to do is we need to add the player. So we'll just take the smile image, we'll drag and drop it. It's blocked by the camera image, but he's there. Now he also needs a collider. We're going to use a box collider on him. We, I'm going to not use a round collider because I just want to avoid anything odd happening because sometimes objects could rotate when they bump. So we're just going to uh, use a box collider and we can always put other controls in place. So add component and we're going to do physics 2D. And actually we'll, we'll go with the polygon collider, even though I said I was going to use a box. We'll go with the polygon collider because we, we can stop the rotation. It's probably good to show you how to do that. So we'll put in the polygon collider. Let's just move them over a little bit. Zoom in. You might want to tweak that a little bit. Okay.
So now we have our player and we have our maze. If we, let's actually move him back to zero, zero, zero. Let's just hit play. So there he is in the maze. And if you decide he's too small, you can always scale him up. So what you can do is with the smile object selected, you can just like do say a scale of X two, Y two. Just gotta be careful, uh, make sure that if you do increase the size, in the case of this image that I drew, I didn't draw them consistently as far as how, how big they are, the passages. So you don't want him to get trapped or rather just blocked, probably won't get trapped, just couldn't move into it in the first place. So let's now give him movement. So now we actually have to do a little bit of coding. We're gonna right click, create, C-sharp, and we'll call this move player. We'll take our smile object and we'll put the script on it. Now, to make him move, he needs to have another component and it's known as a rigid body. So add component, physics 2D. Again, it needs to be, excuse me, or it needs to be physics 2D, I already clicked on that. It needs to be rigid body, 2D. And I mentioned about constraints to keep them from spinning around. If you click on the constraint section, what you can do is you can freeze rotation, so Z rotation. So you don't see the Z because this is in 2D environment, but that's gonna keep them from spinning in a circle. Now, what we're gonna do we're going to go to this script and we're going to look for a game controller. So like a controller for like an Xbox or a PlayStation or something that isn't for one of those, but looks like one and, and is designed for a computer. So we'll go to the script. This you can delete because the double forward slash tells you that it is a remark statement and it's not executed. It's purely there for documentation. Same thing for this. So we just said that we added a component. So get component. It's not a coincidence that it's named that. We're actually trying to access that component with coding. Which component? Well, we said it was rigid body 2D. And now we're gonna add velocity. And it's a new vector too. That is, it's being moved along X and Y. If you're in a 3D environment, then it's X, Y, and Z would be a vector three. Now this is where it's gonna get messy. We are going to take an input statement and take the value of that input and put it directly into the velocity. So we need an X, don't type this out. We need an X and a Y, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to have a value for that X and a value for that Y. So if we look at a game controller, by default, there's a horizontal and a vertical axis, and that corresponds to the left analog stick on a controller. So you don't have to set that up. It's already there. Now, to look for that, it's input, because again, we're looking for input from the player, and we do get axis and it's vertical actually sorry uh should be horizontal since it is the x-axis and then input dot get axis and it's vertical and end with a semicolon. Now, this looks messy, but if you can get this, this is one of the things that makes Unity so powerful is the fact that you yourself don't know what the value is, and yet you can still utilize that value. So this is this axis, the horizontal and the vertical axis, both have a range of one to negative one. So if you push left, that's a negative one, so that will move it negative along the x-axis, which would be to the left. If you push to the right, that'd be a positive one, so it will move it 
to the right, okay? For the vertical, if you push it up, that's a positive, so move it up on the screen, and down will be a negative one. So both axes range from one to negative one. If I didn't make any mistakes, that should work. It'll work. It'll be slow though, because again, you the the velocity is one, and that's slow. When I added the rigid body, by default, there's gravity. Let's set that to zero. Typo, vertical. Even though it'd been easy enough to edit that out, it's good to know that sometimes it's as simple as a typo. So we'll leave in that mistake. There we go. Like I said, very slow. So ultimately, all this gobbledygook is ultimately translating into a one to a negative one and something in between. So what you can do is you can now apply math to this. So say times three. Times three. Save it. Always make sure to save your work because if you don't, the code will be here, but it won't act as if it's there. So always make sure you're saving your work. There we go, much faster. And now for the test, see, he stops. Actually, we already knew that he was hitting the walls because the first time had gravity. Now, obviously, the camera is not moving with the smiley, but we'll see how easy it is to address that. Basically, what you want is you want the camera to be a child to the player. So in other words, if I take the camera and I drag and drop it onto this, see how it's indented? So I dropped it onto the smile object. The indentation shows you that it's subject to what's happening to this object. This is the child, this is the parent. So if I move the parent, the child moves. If I rotate this, this moves. There we go. So like I said, the illusion is that the maze is moving because you and the camera are both moving. Okay, so you already have the basics of the game. You now have a maze, and you now have a player that moves around. And now it's just a matter of adding complexity onto it. So let's add a door and a key. So we'll take our door image, we'll drag and drop it. We'll move that over here, and it's too small. But again, as we discussed, you can scale objects. You can either scale the image or you can just scale this particular object itself. So to scale the image, if you click on it, see pixels per unit. If you make this number smaller, the image gets bigger. I know it sounds contradictory, but that's the way it works. So it defaults to 100, set it to 80, click on apply, see it got bigger. Or you can click on the door object within the scene and increase it. So in the transform, component, say make it 1.2 and 1.2. Let's go up to 1.4 and 1.4. We'll add a component, Physics 2D. Now, like we said, there needs to be a collider for the collisions to occur. So we will go to Polygon Collider. And now that should block me from getting out of the exit. Ultimately, we're going to put something here to do like a successful completion. So you can't bump through the wall there. And depending on how complex it is, you can maybe add a slight sprint. Again, this is a really great way to start programming because it's very easy to make this scale. It's very easy to add additional features. And I can't get out. So I need a key. So we'll take our key, drag and drop that into the scene. I'd probably put it way over here, but I don't want to waste your time with me running around, so I'll just put it over here. 
add component physics 2d again we need a polygon collider now in this case i'm going to make this a trigger in other words when this collides with this i don't want it to be a solid collision i want to actually be able to pick it up so we're going to set this to a trigger and now we just have to add a check for that so there's a couple ways you can do this you can use the name of the object which we're going to do in, in this scene uh, or in this program this game but you could also set up a tag so we'll do, actually let's set up the tag because that will help you in the long run. If you're instantiating objects, the names get kind of messy. So we'll just do a tag. So we'll click on the drop down. We'll do add tag. We'll click on the plus. We'll just type in key. We'll save. And then we go back. So adding doesn't actually add it. It, it means you created the tag. Now we actually have to click on key. And so now the key has a tag of key. Why do you want to do that? Maybe you have 20 different enemies that could do damage. Well, you don't want to check for 20 different enemies name. You could just have a tag called enemy and every single enemy has the tag called enemy. So in this case, it's a wash. You can do it either way. But when you start having a lot of objects, it's easier just to give them a common tag. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check so we go back to our script that's on the player. We're going to look for a collision. So we're going to do on trigger enter 2D. It has to be the 2D. This other stuff that appeared, it's because I'm using Microsoft Visual Studio and it knows that that goes along with it. I'm going to get rid of collision here because that makes it sound like an action. You're actually checking for an object. So this is actually referencing the object. So you'll see a lot of programmers do that. They'll put in the word other. So we can now check if, and the if statement has to be in parentheses. So if other, what attribute the other? Well, we just added a tag and you have to do a double equal sign because it's unity. So other dot tag equals equals and the tag was key. We want something to happen. Well, what we want to do, we want to have Come up here and we'll create a new variable. So let's create public. We'll make this a static variable. That's why it's accessible to other objects. So public static have, sorry, I have to say what kind of variable it is. Uh, we'll use a string. Have key and it will default to n for now. And thinking ahead, public static string have friend because we said you have to find the friend. Also, we'll default to now. So if you have the key, we want, or if you touch the key, then have key will be equal. to Y for yes. So what's going to happen is we're going to want the door, we want the key to be picked up so that we want the key to disappear. And then we want the door to disappear if you have the key. We already saw what happens when you don't have the key. Now we want something to happen. So what we could do is we can just have the completion uh, happen when you, when you uh, use the key. So Let's create a second script just to clean up the key. So create, and we'll do C sharp, and we'll call this keycon for key control. We'll click on the key. We'll put keycon on it. We'll open that up. You can see we have two different tags, uh, tabs, excuse me, not tags, two different tabs, one for each script. And in this, we're just simply going to also look for a trigger so on trigger enter again has to be 2d and then we'll get rid of collision replace that with other
And the amount of spaces really don't matter. I'm just trying to make it visually clear to see if, and again, the whole thing needs to be in parentheses, if other, and we need to create a tag for the smiley face, if other.tag equals equals smile, then destroy game object. So pretty straightforward. The script is attached to the key. If it collides with the smile, then the key will get destroyed. And now we'll just go back to our smile and create a new tag. So add tag. Again, the, the tags might seem unnecessary because we're only using one object, but it's a good habit to get in to get into. So we'll go back to smile. And again, adding the tag just creates the tag. You actually have to select it. Okay, so if I haven't forgotten anything, the key should now disappear and the value should now increase. We won't actually see the value. You could do a debug to see it, but... And now we'll just walk over to it. There we go. We picked it up. And you could do something like you could have a particle sister or some kind of visual, you know, twinkle to show that you picked it up. So the question is what we want to do with the door. Let's save this scene because Unity breaks applications up into scenes. So we'll do this save as. And we'll call this. We'll just call this level one. Now what we need to do, we are going to create a new scene. So going to go to File, New Scene. And we're just going to go up to Game Object, Effects, sorry, Game Object, 3D Object, and 3D Text. And it's just going to say you win. So in the so with the text object selected, and you just come to the changes to Z here, changes to zero. Changes to zero, changes to zero, that way it's all centered. Actually, it's not centered because the point is um, in the upper left corner, so that's fine. We'll just manually center it. And then we'll change this in the text mesh component in the text attribute. We will type you win. We'll move that over a little. We'll save this. We'll call this win screen. Always make sure where you are. Sometimes if you have multiple scenes that look similar, you want to make sure that you're in the right one. So we'll go to back to level one by double clicking. And now when we collide with the door, we're just going to go to the wind screen. But to do that, we'll go back to the move player script. Up here, we have to add using unity engine dot scene management semicolon. Now, since neither the door nor the smiley face are the two objects that are going to collide, since neither one of them are a trigger, this won't work. I'll need a new section for that. So on collision enter 2D, and we're going to change this to door. So we're going to say if parenthesis and then another parenthesis because we're going to check two conditions. So if door, and when I'm typing door, it's referring to this right here, game object dot tag equals equals door. And we have to make sure we add that tag. And and, and, yes, it's a double. 
and we want to make sure that have key is equal equal to yes. So it's a little weird to look at, but remember the whole if statement has to be in parentheses, and then anything you check, each one of those individually has to be within parentheses. I don't know why Unity forces you to do this for collisions. So if it's a trigger, you can just say other.tag. If it's a solid collision, then for some reason you need to refer to the game object. I'm just going to say because it's Unity. It's what my uh, Microsoft Access professor would already say. Why does it work that way? Because it's Access. And so we just want to we just want to load the win scene. So we called it. Actually, I change it to screen. Well, screen's fine too. Uh, win screen. So sorry. So scene manager dot load scene. So that's self-explanatory. We're drilling down. We're saying, okay, we want something from scene manager. What we want the load scene command. Well, load scene. Just put in the name which scene we're going to load. So we said it's win screen. And my apologies, I actually did a splice. So for the door, we need this to be tagged. So I don't think I actually showed you creating door, but you've created other tags. So just click on add tag, type out door, and then select it. So my apologies, I had to actually do this in a couple takes. So now what should happen we should be able to grab the key, and then we should be able to collide with the door. And then let's actually speed this up so they don't move so slow. I don't want to waste your time with them moving really pokey. And if I haven't forgotten anything, that should now allow me to grab the key and then open the door. So there's the key. Just hit a few walls just to make sure the speed didn't break it. It didn't. And he's not rotating, which he shouldn't, because we we froze the x uh, the z axis. There we go. You win. We're going to run it one more time just to make sure I didn't break anything with the new code, and we're not going to grab the key. But the conditions are pretty clear. It says that you need to have that key variable. There we go. So it's still solid. Okay, so all that remains is adding the friend. And again, like I said, this is a good example to learn how to program because you're, you're showing how you can add new layers of complexity and how it scales. So we're going to take the elephant. We'll put him there. And we'll just put him a little bit further. You can hide him wherever you want. But I'm just going to put him here so it's obvious that, um, you know, so I don't have to go change, ch chasing after him. So again, he needs, just like the other object, Physics 2D, Polygon Collider 2D, and he's also going to be a trigger because he's going to disappear. We're going to go back to the Move Player script, and... See, I already added the have friend. So since he's a trigger, I can do this in the trigger section. So I'm just going to copy and paste this, partially out of laziness and partially to reinforce the fact that you now you're just rinsing and repeating. You're using coding. You're just repurposing it for another uh, item. You picked up a key. If the other tag is going to be friend, so we need to create a tag. And the other variable was have friend. Let's go back to him, go to tag, add tag, friend. Again, go back and actually select that. Okay, so we can now collide with the friend. And now what we do is you build onto this. Because now to go through the door, you have to have the key in the friend. So again, you're just building on top of what you've already done. It's iterative in nature. And have friend equals yes. So if you collide with the door and you have the key and you have the friend, 
and that should do it. We need something that picks up the friend. So I did keycon. We could actually use the same script for, yeah, actually this is fine because all this does is check to see if the smile has collided with it and all it does is destroy the object. We can use the same thing for the, the friend. So keycon, we'll put that on friend. We'll actually do this twice. So we'll grab the key, but we won't grab the friend. Sorry, friend. And just going to make sure, again, that we didn't break it. So whenever you're adding new functionality, you want to make sure that you didn't break old functionality. So good. Key doesn't work anymore. Okay, friend, I'm on my way back. And again, you could have some kind of like sparkle or something when you pick up the friend. There you go. Okay, so I think that concludes this project. I hope you found it useful. And I already had a project like this previously, so I'll probably remove that from the channel. And if you have any questions or you want to see any additions, I can't really think of much more other than the fact that you would, once you beat one maze, then you would just load a different maze and load a different maze and load a different maze. Having said that, you would just copy this, make level two, level three, level four, and that whenever you get to the win screen, you simply have a code that says what the, you have script rather, that says, okay, load the next scene. So just as we load the win screen, you instead would load level two, level three, level four after the win screen. So if there's anything you want to see, just let me know. Leave it in the comments. Again, I hope you found this useful, and please enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe.